Carol. And I'm Carolyn. And we're high school teachers from Cherry Hill High School West. I teach drama. And I teach 12th grade English. And when we're not teaching, we manage the productions at the high school. We often get caught up in the drama, drama of the drama. Yes, we do. Right. But we also attend a lot of theater outside of what we do. Um, recently, we had the opportunity to see Moon Over Buffalo at the Kelsey Theater in Mercer County. And I really enjoyed the production. It was um, produced, it's a play by Kenneth Ludwig. Um, and it was produced at the Kelsey. The Kelsey's a theater that does lots of productions there with yes. various companies. And they also do academic productions. And this production was directed by Kitty Getlick. Yes, and she's been with the um, Kelsey for 39 years. So she sort of manages all the other theaters that come in. But this production, we were lucky enough to see her to direct see her. it. Yeah, and, and I, and I well, I have a couple questions. First, my first question is, have you ever been to Buffalo? I have been to Buffalo. I went to school in upstate New York. Um, I had been to Buffalo maybe twice, and I really can't recall why I went. Oh, because now I think I might want to take a trip to Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo is one of those places, kind of reminds me of like Cleveland and Pittsburgh, that you think, ooh, why would I want to go there? And then you go there, and they're awesome. I assume Buffalo Wings come from Buffalo, New York. They do. They do. There's the original restaurant there that sells Buffalo Wings. Okay, because right? I did not know that. Yeah. But I do know that when back in my day when I was in Syracuse, way before the popularity of Buffalo Wings, we had Buffalo Wings in Syracuse, and I'm assuming it's because it's in close proximity to, to Buffalo. Buffalo. Yes. Well, I was... You know, I you know when I went to Cleveland, everybody said, "Ooh, why are you going to Cleveland?" Because the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is there, right. right? And then you want to go to Pittsburgh, and everybody's like, "Ooh, why do you want to go to Pittsburgh?" Because they have the Incline there and the Andy Warhol Museum. Right. So I was thinking that this summer I might do a little shuffle off to Buffalo and see Buffalo just to see what's there and maybe eat some wings and maybe see some theater while you're there. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just am interested now. I'm fascinated by Buffalo. So why don't we talk a little bit about, about the, the show? show? Okay. okay. All right. So the next question I have is, I, I, I enjoyed the show, but I don't get this whole concept of farce. I need you to explain that to me. So so farce is really simple. It's, it's really this idea of comedy and it's exaggerated situations. It's improbable, you know, events kind of happening. Um, so in this show, in particular, there's that whole scene with mistaken identities and these doors. Everybody's going in a door, looking for someone, they're, and somebody else is coming out yeah. the door, and they're missing each other. And that's what makes the comedy. It's situation comedy. Very much like the big one that I always think of that's farce for our generation is Three's Company. Yeah. But for the kids today, it's a lot of what goes on in like um, what my sons watch, like Nickelodeon, like the iCarly show that yeah. they used to like is a lot of farce. Um, so, you know, the kids like that humor. They would love Moon Over Buffalo. Right, and I, it, it made me think of, you know, some of the situations made me think of the Carol Burnett show. Right. right? You know, the, that mo those moments where Tim Conway and Harvey Corman were, you know, poking each other or falling down or hitting each other, you know, over the head with things. It, it reminded me of that. And I do know that Carol Burnett played the role of Charlotte she did. On, on Broadway when it op when the show opened. So with, I, do you remember who she was with? I don't remember. Neither do I. <laughs> oh, um, no. um, but it, it reminded me of that. And, and I do, you know, it, it grew on me. I will say that. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. But this show did it well. And it, and it, grew, it, it grew on me. I ended up in, enjoying the show very much. Yeah, and I think part of that is their... their um, production of the show and how well they handled the timing and pacing of all those scenes. So when you do a show like that, um, that's really important is, is pacing always. And um, the interesting thing about the Kelsey is that they have all these um, different theater groups come in. So they actually, Kitty told me, they actually rehearse in classrooms mm -hmm. and then they move the show in the week of the production. So that set, which was pretty incredible yeah. with all these I think there were one two four four Three. doors four five doors maybe yeah. maybe five doors maybe even six and well we if didn't you count the it. one that was on the balcony too because they used that at one right point, right yeah. the, um so they put the set up and they actually had to probably just well she said just rehearse the opening and closing of the doors and the best part for me is that as I'm watching them 
they were never watching each other. Yes. It was so timed so well. So they weren't waiting to open the door, okay, as the person coming in or coming out. It was, it was just really... Well, they really... couldn't really see each other either, no, right? No, you they know, couldn't. Because the doors were spaced out around the set, and some were over here and some were over there, and sometimes they were inside and sometimes they were outside. So they couldn't watch for each other. They right. just had to time it. They just right. had to do it, you know? And it, it, it made me... I was often laughing out loud because at the same time as we were seeing the show, I was having my own door issues at home because oh, right. we were getting that stupid new kitchen floor and we couldn't walk on it. So we had to, you know, go out the den door, outside, around the back of the house, up the steps, through the porch, and then into the front of Just the house. Just like Moon Over Buffalo. Just like Moon Over Buffalo. And that's what I kept thinking. This Except whole... I don't think your father was rolling around drunk. In the house, well, like George. Not, no, he wasn't. But you know, we there were there were times where we were passing each other on the outside, going right. in and out, and I thought, oh look, it's like being at home tonight yeah. as we're watching the show. And I thought John Pinto as George was, you know, yeah. playing it. It's hard to play drunk, um, and he did just such a great job. I mean, tumbling down the steps, falling over the chaise, um, just really falling back backwards behind all that stuff on the back of the set. It yeah. was pretty cool. And he had a, um, I, I just, he was really enjoyable to watch. I, I, I liked him. My, my favorite character, though, was Matthew Cassidy as Richard, the attorney, the, the love affair interest of, of Charlotte. Charlotte. Um, and he, he was extremely funny. His facial expressions were funny. His mannerisms were funny. There's a part of the show where he comes out into the audience and he is uh, audience member for when they're doing the production of Private Lives slash right. Cyrano, right. right? And he is sitting in the audience, and he inter he interacted with with us, even though there were not that many people in the audience when we saw it. Um, it was a rehearsal, but he interacted with us, and I thought he was he was for me my favorite character. Right, and I also liked Linda Cunningham, who played Ethel, and it was a smaller part. She plays the mother mother in law. Mm -hmm. But she, her delivery was awesome. She, she played it very um, straight. Um, she's the one who, you know, causes a lot of the confusion yeah, yeah. when she answers the phone because she can't hear. She can't hear. Pretty except, much. Except like my father when he, when he has selective hearing. And my he father wants has to, selective hearing too. Right. And they can hear when they want to hear. And then when right. they don't, Which they is hear exactly hard what, what she, she does. Because right. there's right. that one line where she says, uh, you know, I had my, my hearing, hearing aid in. Right. And I was like, yep, that's exactly how it works. Right. right. So she was really fantastic to watch in, in, in that space of that time. And the set itself, I don't think we've talked enough about yeah. um, how nice the set was. Placed it set in 1953. And this is something I always tell my, my students. Um, you know, period pieces aren't necessarily written in the 50s, right? right. Yeah. So this was a play that's not written in the 50s. I think it was written in like 1995. Yes, I yeah. think you're right. Um, but it's set in 1953. So all the references to the movie industry, yeah. you know, as and and to um, um, the costuming was fantastic. Um, their hair was was um, period really made um, made a difference right. in the way the you perceived the production. Right, and and you know there were references that I was thinking as as we were watching it. You know the one the one references on that circular couch that they had there. There was this Andy Williams album, right? Right, that they had right. sitting there. And and I was thinking, does anybody even know who Andy Williams? I know who Andy. I Williams. do too, because it was the very first time that I saw Donny Osmond live on television. So I know very well who Andy Williams I, was. I remember that. All right. Yeah. I mean, that was the moment that changed my life. Right. Um, and but they made references to you know Frank Capra is a very important person in right. the show, but Loretta Young and um, Greer Garson and oh, right. you know Ronald Coleman and Ronald Coleman all, all these all, right. like you know and I'm thinking would the young younger people get those references but I don't think you need to get the right. references to understand yeah. that these are like you know two-bit actors pretty much like us on this show sometimes <laughs> right <laughs> um, two-bit actors who are trying to make it in yeah. The movie industry, right. and they're in Buffalo, New York, right. doing show two shows in rep that right. don't even relate to each other. So you see, Reno and Private Lives, lives. Right. and they're waiting because they think they're going to make a movie, and Frank Capra's going to come, come and watch us. Which is like one of my favorite movies that Christopher Guest wrote. You know, he wrote Spinal Tap, and mm -hmm. he wrote um, Best of Show. He did one called Waiting for Guffman, where they. There's this community theater, and it's Catherine O'Hara and Eugene Levy and all those Second City people in there with him. And they're waiting 
for this reviewer to come and this guy shows up because he's lost and they so think very he's, much like Howard right. in the show when yes. Howard and they think he's the, Frank Capra. They think yeah. he's Frank Ca Capra because they don't know who he is. So, you know, yes, the guy, who, the character of Howard ends up not only being mistaken for Frank Capra, but then he gets mistaken for Eileen's um, brother, brother who's, who's going to kill George because... Yeah. You know, there there's this whole thing going on. So, and he shows up in this uniform that was actually a costume. I mean, it's it. You know, that's how that's what farce is. It's all these situations okay. that mm -hmm. kind of kind of wrap around each other and 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 make it so funny. Yeah, and and I and I did, um, you know, some of the slapstick elements. Yes, I liked. You know, like we talked about him falling down and all, but there was that those couple of scenes with the pants where. They would rip the pants open, and then Ethel would go back and sew the pants, and they would bring the pants, pants out, back and they out, kept, you know, and they kept rip ripping the pants. The pants. Um, I, I, you know, I, I liked it, and I agree. I don't, I don't think that you need to get the reference. It's often like at school when kids talk to me about things that they've watched, um, you know, because they're watching YouTube all the time, and and it's the same sorts of things that they're watching right. on YouTube, like you know, when the guys go over, they're riding their bikes and they go over the handlebars or when they're mm -hmm. doing those sorts of things, right? But, and what we didn't talk about was um, in the space, which is really yeah. nice. So this is very different from the last show we saw, which right. was a very small space. This is a big space. But they have this main stage area. And then they have these this kind of second stage area mm -hmm. where they actually set their play. Right. So we were watching their play, The Balconies for Private Lives, and the balcony for Cyrano, both of them have balconies, right? right um, were set up on the side. So that gave them a separate playing area, which was really kind of um, neat for that scene. And, and I thought the, the... That's where I was laughing. Like, I well, was crying at that scene because that whole thing is the mistaken, I, you know, that the two couples are on their honeymoons with the other person's, that's private lives, right. the other person's ex spouse right. and they're supposed to find each other and the daughter is playing the husband's w right. wife which yes. was so strange but there were moments there where he thinks he's in Cyrano and I, well, I was actually Well even before even when she laughing. was out on the balcony waiting waiting oh, right, for him because right. he was getting in his Cyrano outfit and she was sort of ad you know ad-libbing like she was in the show to make sure that you know giving him time to me that was some of the funniest yeah, parts of the show when was. she was out there by herself, like kind of you know doing it, and and I thought she did a good job. It was um, Angela, what's her last name? Uh, Angela uh, Fascinelli. Fascinelli. Sorry. Um, she she was good by herself, and and the character, you know, the actor who played um, Paul. Tim Moran, he was good by by himself, but the two of them together yes, they were, were excellent. Very, very good. Right? They the right. chemistry that they felt they fed off from each other, the two of them were just phenomenal together. That scene where she's you know, where he's trying to convince her they're rehearsing, but he's trying to convince her that right. they, 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 they should be back they together. They should be back together. Right. Um, you, you know, and, and I I thought that when they the whole they meshed. Yeah, they, and the whole did. coffee thing with, you know, they're gonna sober him up. With coffee, but then Ethel thought she was supposed to make, make like Irish coffee. Irish coffee, <laughs> so they're just feeding him more right? alcohol. And he and he said, "Oh, it must be Colombian, right?" right? And that that made me laugh out loud because and and I thought, "Oh, well, that's a reference the kids would get too, right?" Yeah, but, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, but that that was pretty funny too. And 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 Ethel kind of moves in and out. She's sort of like the straight person. She is the but, straight character, but she's also extremely funny right because it's all deadpan and that again you know it counters what everybody else is doing when there's all this craziness and then you've got this deadpan character coming through yeah. you know yeah. like you know jerry lewis and, and dean martin right you know which is 1950s and right. there you go so that that works well for that yeah. that part yeah. of the play I, and and i i i thought that you know ethel as the as the straight as the straight person in the show um had the best line for me in the show when she at the at early early in the you know first act she she says they're talking about the importance of theater and and she says you know theater is the, is important it's the lifeline to our humanity without it we would all be um republicans and you, you know you know 
I know. Apologies to all my Republican friends, but you know that's that's kind of true. Right. And it, and it and it was serious. It was funny. Everybody laughed. But if you take that line out by itself and you look at it by itself, it it's you know it's very serious. That's why we do what we do with kids is to make sure that you know through books and plays right. and all that stuff they they connect to their to their humanity and who they who they are. So I, I, you know, I, I struggled with it. I won't, not with the production, but with the whole, you know, idea of it. But I did enjoy it by the end. Like I yeah. was laughing and I, I enjoyed uh, it's it. It's just a fun play. And I'm going to say this, okay? So, All right, go ahead. Um, you know, when these local theater companies have to pick seasons, and we kind of talked to Kitty about, you know, how they do that. She right. has the say. You want something that's going to appeal to a wide variety of people. Right. And... Um, this is one of those plays that I think just works because this is what you need, a night of entertainment that's funny, you know, and just enjoyable and you go out and laugh. Right. And that's what you do with this play. And I think that it's, there's nothing in it that is not appropriate, like to no. bring a, a child. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's, you know, the whole idea that he cheated on his wife, but yeah, it's but so nothing what? that you don't see on TV. And they do love each other. Yes, they do. I mean, even though he's cheating on his on her and she's cheating on him with Richard, they end up together in and, the end. And ultimately, they 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 love each other and they right. understand that they love each other and they understand they can't function away from each other. Right. So, so this is the kind of thing you want to come out and see. It it wasn't far for us to get there from Cherry Hill. No, it's a fantastic space. I've n I've never been there. I never was either, and I and I really I really enjoyed it. And and if um, you know, it's 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 large enough that you get the feeling that you're in a in a theater. Right. But it's small enough that you know, no matter where you were sitting, right. in that There's theater, a good that seat. You're going to be it's and be and a it's seat. just a fun um, night. It's a quick show too. Yeah, it was very but, quick. But I will say this: it was quick because the pace was great. That yes. it's the director yeah. and the actors that create that. Um, because otherwise, it could be deadly. And this, the pace was fantastic from the beginning to the end. It just moved. Everybody was on top of what they needed to be on top of, and it just worked really well that and, way. And and you know there were there were there were moments like we talked about. We were talking earlier about that that sword fighting scene, right? Right. Like I I like that, and I know that that's hard to do, right? You right. Know, it it's is. hard to stage that. A lot to of make physical it look, physical right. comedy, and that's always hard. That's just like you know when they're trying to get him dressed when he's drunk or. You know, those moments yeah. um, when they tie him up and put him in the uh, Howard in, in the, the closet. closet. Well, that that made me that was that was funny to me when he comes out and he was like, oh, he just came out of the closet. Oh, yeah. And and he oh, was yeah. like, oh, no, not that closet. That, that was, was funny. You know, that was sort of this melding of, you know, 1950s where, you know, you right. didn't have those conversations with the 1990s. By the time when the play was written, you you could you know, you could have that sort of one line kind of joke. I, th I thought that was pretty I, clever I liked too. that too. Yeah, I did. And I, and I, I just enjoyed it. And I, 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 yeah, I thought all the performances were even. Yeah. Every one of them, they, that was a real ensemble piece and that was a true ensemble. They yeah. were, they were wonderful to yeah, watch. Yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't one that outshone the other. No, and they, not at they, all. They, they, there was chemistry between all of them. And I, it's a play. I mean, I'm just saying I could sit through it again. Absolutely. I could sit through it again and I would laugh just like I did because it's funny. It's funny. It is. It's just funny for the sake of, of being funny. And sometimes for me, I, I like that more um, cerebral kind of comedy. Um, but, but, you know, I was laughing out loud in this. Like, yeah, me you too. Know, at different moments. Or, um, so, can I eat my cake now? Sure, you okay. can. All right. I'm going to eat my cake. Thank you, Greensleeves, for this. Thank you, Greensleeves, awesome. for the cake. Awesome. And until next time, break a leg.